Welcome back to Gruber Motor Company, the service center of the future. We have a developing issue this morning with a Tesla Model S from Alpharetta, Georgia. So this Tesla Model S is a 2012 and it's 13 years old. It's also one of the first 1,000 or so 2012 Tesla Model S vehicles to be delivered to U.S. customers, which was a special edition fully loaded signature series of cars. This Model S went to a service center in Alpharetta, Georgia with a battery pack problem. And the prognosis was there's a problem inside the battery pack which requires a replacement. The cost of that is around $20,000 at a Tesla service center. What we do is repair these packs rather than replace them. And we're going to show you today what we found as we took this pack out of the car. In one of our previous videos, we made a correlation between coastal cities and chloride ion migration in humid environments near oceans, which rust ferrous metals. This car came from Alpharetta, Georgia, which is pretty far inland, so we can rule out coastal area chloride ion migration causing corrosion and rust. However, what we found in this battery was quite surprising. As we lifted this blanket, you can see there was an amount of water in these channels which ended up corroding a lot of this hardware. So the problem with hardware this badly corroded is it makes it extremely difficult to remove. And as you can see in some cases here there may actually be corrosion and rust that has penetrated the top lid. And then if you get water inside the pack it creates a whole new set of problems. What we are finding in later battery packs is there is a clear mylar s surface that is actually adhered to this battery pack with a gasket material which seals out any water getting into this portion. It looks like in these earlier Model S's they depended on a gasket that runs around the pack that seals against the bottom of the car to keep out moisture. And it appears that that is not working very well. So even with a later gasket sealing off this portion of the center of the pack. As you can see here, there are other areas outside the gasket that are exposed that can rust and cause problems potentially with water ingress going into the pack. So you may ask whether something was missing in the design that allowed this level of corrosion. Tesla actually does extensive validation testing before releasing a product, but that can only take you so far. 13 years of exposure are difficult to replicate in a lab environment. In retrospect, perhaps instead of depressed channels here, which can hold water, from either accumulated condensation or driving in wet climates should have been avoided so water can drain rather than pool in these depressed areas. Of course, other things come to mind. Maybe this top lid should have been aluminum rather than ferrous metal. Maybe the hardware should have been stainless steel. But again, I don't believe that Tesla was aware at the time this was designed that this could become a problem. So our next challenge with this pack is going to be to remove all of the corroded hardware, open up the pack, and carefully analyze what's going on inside that is causing a problem with this pack. What we will also do once we put the lid back on after the battery repair is replace the hardware of course and then put an undercoating on the surface that prevents any further water damage until this pack is eventually replaced with a replacement battery pack. So let's go check out what's going on over here with this uh, gray roadster. What are we doing here Ramiro? Hey well we just got our hard top back that was damaged in the, the right corner and I'm about to put it back on and we'll see how it turns out. This was that same Tesla Roadster hardtop that we saw yesterday that had a damaged corner. These hardtops are removable and oftentimes as they get stored in garages there's a potential for some damage. So this has been completely rebuilt in the corner here. And this car is almost ready to go back. Let's go see what these guys are doing with this Model S from California this morning. So guys, what are we doing yeah, here? We're putting back regulators and buttoning up. Did you guys change all of the regulators? All of the plastic barrels have been changed. Excellent. So this was a uh, upgrade basically 
to prevent any future failures. And what we're talking about here is the plastic ferrules in the window regulators that eventually break. This customer elected to proactively replace them with our aluminum version, which of course won't break. So let's go see what's going on in the office these days. So Ken is one of our engineers that uh, works on PEMS, our electronics modules. What kind of uh, things are you working on today, Ken? Right now I'm doing an upgrade on the pen. This one here? This one here. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm disassembling it and uh, removing the bad parts and putting in new parts. Excellent. Okay. We get a steady flow of Tesla Roadster power electronic module upgrades these days. They've been aging, of course, going on 10 years plus. And uh, there are a number of uh, issues inside the pen that need to be addressed eventually. All 2,000 cars are going to need their power electronic modules upgraded. And uh, we've got this down to an assembly line process. So guys, what's going on in the operations team this morning? A whole lot. Um, yeah? Cars coming in. We have four roadsters coming in next week. Um, one will be in this weekend. Um, and then we're working on getting uh, Model S VIN 10 in by next week. Excellent. Okay. Mm -hmm. What are we doing with that Model S? Um, it's going to be a declining battery, so we're going to have to open up the battery pack and find the module that is draining the battery. The bad cell, okay. And four roadsters, you say? Four roadsters, yes. So we have um, two coming from California, um, and then we have a few coming from the East Coast. Um, so they're all going to do, one is a flood damage roadster. We're going to do some cleaning on that right. one. And then the other three is going to be PEM work and battery drops. You know, we don't get many uh, flood damaged cars in these days anymore, but uh, it's kind of rare to get a flood damaged roadster. Uh, we got very good with the Model S flood damaged cars. We bought 22 of them in 2017 and uh, we're able to uh, not only make them function, but also take care of all of the water damage issues inside the vehicle. So thank you for joining us this morning. As always, uh, if you like our content, keep an eye on our YouTube channel. We'll be posting a lot more. I'm Pete Gruber, and again, thank you for joining us.